Welcome to part four of Cardiac Anatomy for Radiology. This is part of a ten part series looking at the anatomy of the heart, which is going to be particularly useful for anyone sitting FRCR examinations or just interested in brushing up on their cardiac imaging anatomy. This section is part four, the coronary arteries. So this is one of my favourite subjects. Um, these little tiny blood vessels are responsible for delivering blood to the muscle of the heart and are also responsible for coronary artery disease, one of the biggest killers in the Western world. So here are some words for you to remember. This is what we're going to be covering in this section. Coronary arteries can be split into two main arteries. We've got a left coronary artery and a right coronary artery. The left coronary artery is divided into initially the left main stem which splits into the left anterior descending and the left circumflex artery and both of these have their own branches. Branches of the left anterior descending are called diagonals and there are also septal branches. Branches of the circumflex artery are called obtuse marginals. The right coronary artery also has some branches, it's got an acute marginal and then along the bottom of the heart we've got the posterior descending artery which is normally supplied by the right but can also be supplied by the left side of it. An important thing to remember here is the words that we use to describe these coronary arteries have changed over time so depending on what book you're looking at you might see these called slightly different things. There are standard um, ways of naming these segments and you can get very complicated into splitting it into lots of different sections. But we're just going to keep things simple today. If you use these words to describe the coronary arteries, no one can mark you wrong. So here's a nice CT reconstruction, a 3D reconstruction of the heart. The bright red part here is the aorta, and we've got these little tubes, which are the coronary arteries. This one here is the left coronary artery, and on the other side, we've got the right coronary artery. So let's start with the left coronary artery. So here we're back to axial images. We've got the aorta here, and the left coronary artery comes out on the left side. The first part of the left coronary artery, before any branches, is called the left main stem. The left main stem then branches. The first branch is called the left anterior descending artery and this goes down over the front, over the anterior of the heart. Going backwards is the left circumflex artery. So the left anterior descending artery, which is this one here, has some branches. Here is a branch and there's also these little tiny branches on this side. So there's an easy way to remember what to call these branches. A uh, great radiologist in Edinburgh told me, diagonals go down. Very simple, very easy to remember. This is a diagonal branch because it's going down. This is the front, this is the back, this is going down, diagonals go down. So this is a diagonal branch. These little ones here that are going up the way, these are the septal branches. They're a bit smaller, they're a bit wiggly, they're going into the interventricular septum, which is down in here. So these ones are the septal branches. This is the diagonal branch. And the diagonal branches are named consecutively in numerical order. So this is a first diagonal branch. Branches of the left circumflex artery are called obtuse marginal branches. And again, these are numbered consecutively. You have the first obtuse marginal, the second obtuse marginal, etc. So here we've got the left circumflex artery, that branch off the left main stem. The atrioventricular branch of the circumflex artery is the one that's going in between the atrium and ventricle, down and then around back behind the heart. And then the obtuse marginals are the branches of the left circumflex artery. Then we've got the right coronary artery. This is where our naming scheme slightly breaks down. It's not really on the right, it's more towards the front, but we still call it the right coronary artery. And the right coronary artery runs in the groove between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The 
right coronary artery normally has a branch that runs along the front side of the heart, along the front side of that right ventricle, and it's called the acute marginal branch. This is the acute margin of the heart, hence the naming acute marginal. And then the right coronary artery feeds down in between the two um, ventricles on the bottom of the heart, and this branch is called the posterior descending artery. Now this is normally supplied by the right coronary artery, but it can be supplied by the right circumflex or even the left anterior descending artery. So here's some other pictures of the posterior descending artery running along the bottom surface of the heart in between the right, uh, sorry, in between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Now there's another name to remember when it comes to coronary arteries, and that's the intermediate branch. It's also called the ramus branch, and it's one that's present in some people, but not in others. And this is a branch that's in between the LAD and the circumflex. So instead of the left main stem dividing in two, in this case it divides into three, and the one in the middle is called the intermediate or the ramus branch. Another little branch to remember is the sinoatrial nodal branch artery, and this can come off the right or the left side. Now coronary arteries, we've got lots of different ways of displaying them now. We can look at them on axial imaging, or we can do these curved planar reformations. And these involve drawing a centre line down the middle of the vessel, either automatically or manually. And then you can display the coronary artery either in curved or in straightened out form. And this is very useful for when we're assessing um, the degree of coronary artery stenosis. So it's very important not to forget the veins. Arteries are very important, but veins are also very important. And the coronary sinus drains blood into the right atrium. So this is the right atrium here, and you can see this contrast filled structure here. This is the coronary sinus. Slightly higher up on this picture here, you can see this contrast filled structure here is the coronary sinus. Now cardiac veins can cause us lots of problems when we're trying to interpret the coronary arteries. If they're in the wrong place at the wrong time, they can make us think that we've got a stenosis in the coronary artery, but in actual fact it's just a vein going over the top. So this here is a coronary artery, but this slightly lower density contrast field structure here is a coronary vein, just going over the top of the coronary artery. So it's always important to be aware of them and look out for them. So that is it for cardiac anatomy for radiology today. We'll be back next time with information about the pericardium.